What's the easiest and the greatest way to set up your kids to be a millionaire? We're going to answer this question and a whole lot more on the latest Good Financial Sense podcast. This is episode 175. What is going on, GFC fam and Wealth Hacker Nation? It is time to make your life more with your always cheerful, always grateful host, Jeff Rose. Now, as you all know, I typically, not always, but sometimes will answer one of your reader questions. And today I don't necessarily have a very specific question that I'm answering because this is a question that I have received quite a bit in all different shapes, sizes, and flavors. What more famous to do than Baskin Robbins 31 flavors? There's a few that are really giving me some curiosity. This one, the pistachio almond the eggnog L. But if you are interested in submitting a question on a future podcast, you can go to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask. And there you will see this nice contact form that you can submit your question, whatever that question may be. It could be on investing, financial planning, parenting. If you want to get parenting advice from me, I'm not sure why you would. I do have four kids. So I do have some experience online business, entrepreneurship, setting goals, productivity, whatever it is. You can go to once again to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask and submit your question. So what is today's question? What are we talking about here? We're talking about our favorite and this is for parents. So parents, this is for you if you have kids. So what is this question? It has everything to do with something I have discussed before talking about the Roth IRA. Now I know I get it. You're like, Jeff, you always talk about the Roth IRA and Yes, that is that is true. <laughs> I don't know how many podcasts I've dedicated to this, but this is one is a bit different because if you have young kids, then setting up a Roth IRA for them by far I think is the one of the greatest gifts that you can give. Now, why is this such a great gift? I mean, there aren't a lot of things that you can do for your kids that can literally give them generational wealth. I, when I think of those type of things, it's like maybe you set up a business, you know, think about the Walmart family, uh, the Walton family, you think about them. Uh, you could also set up a some sort of living trust that they can't set that up for themselves, but you can set up for them and then basically protect their assets after you are gone, after you've left this earth. Like there are not a lot of things that you can create today that can pass on to them and also pass on potentially to their kids, so your grandkids, even years after you're gone. But when it comes to the Roth IRA, there's just some confusion on how you do it. What are the rules? Um, I've had many people contact me that, that want to create a Roth IRA for their kid, and they don't know how, uh, they don't know the income restrictions, income limits, what type of income. So that is some of the things I wanted to address on this podcast. Now, as always, whenever we're doing a podcast, whether it be for the, the actual podcast or the YouTube channel, I always want to have a resource, a text resource. So we do have all these articles on the blog that you can check out. We've got Roth IRA rules for minors. I've got a Roth IRA success story that you can read. Uh, but I believe this was from somebody... Somebody shared the story with me, which I, which is a beautiful story on how they did it. Uh, we've got other types of, you know, setting up saving accounts for your kids, how to invest for your kids. So we have all this ready for you on the blog. But let's talk about first things first. And this is probably the, the biggest rule that you need to understand because you, you might have great intention of setting up a Roth IRA for your child, and like, oh, I just had my, maybe just had a newborn. Maybe it's like they're three years old. Maybe they're four years old, whatever age. Like, oh man, I want to, I want to do this. Like, that would be awesome. I would love to do that. Now, the, the first thing that you need to know, and this is the, the big one, is that they have to have some sort of earned income. They have to make money. Now go in your office and make some money. <laughs> And we're not talking, I mean, it could be babysitting money, and we'll talk about that here in a second. It has to be some sort of, of earned income. It has to be something where basically the IRS knows about it. <laughs> there has to be something reportable. So that means that, yes, could it be babysitting money? I mean, it could be, but then is whoever's paying the babysitter, are they reporting this you know, on their taxes? 
are you reporting this so that if you're, let's say your, your daughter is babysitting, she's making 10 bucks an hour, you know, is she paying 10% of that, whatever her tax rate would be, you know, paying taxes on that essentially. Because if it's all, think of it under, under the table, so to speak, whether it be babysitting money, mowing lawns, washing cars, if it's any type of this type of income, that you're just getting cash and you're not reporting it, then you cannot claim that as earned income and use that for the Roth IRA. So that that's a that's a big deal. And many people, they just they just don't know. So that's that's what I'm sharing with you today. Now, typically when I share this, I get a lot of questions about, okay, well, how um, and maybe I should have said this at the top of the podcast, but you know, I've got four children. My oldest is 14 at the time of this recording. My youngest is seven. She, my daughter's seven. Each of them, all of them, all four of them currently have a Roth IRA. Now, my oldest, my 14-year-old, soon to be 15, he has more. And that's because we started his sooner. He's been around longer than the others. But uh, we set them up years ago and they all have money now we haven't been maxing i don't i'm trying to remember i think we've maxed out my older two boys for a few of the years i'm not remembering exactly so we haven't maxed them out so the question i typically get after i share the fact that you have to have earned income to be able to set up a, a roth ira for your kids like how do i have roth iras for my kids if i have to have reportable income and the way that I have that is because with my business, the way I have it set up, they are employees of the business. And this is the online business. And this is something that I completely ran through my CPA. It was actually my CPA that suggested this. Not so, I mean, yeah, he suggested the Roth IRA, but he suggested putting our kids on our payroll and that's for tax purposes, which we could talk about in, on another podcast. But after we set them up as employees on the business, then we they had reportable income and we could then take some of that money and put that into Roth IRAs for them. And that's what we did. So I want to stress, if you're going to do this, my CPA is the one that suggested this. If you're going to do this, make sure that you're working with a tax professional to get a second opinion. And one of the ways that we justified uh, you know, because if we ever got audited, I think the IRS would be like, okay, well, what, do you, what are your kids doing? How, why, how, are, how can you justify that you're paying? I think our daughter was maybe five, five or six whenever we put her on our payroll. And the easy thing for us was because of the online business, because of how we use social media, how we use social media to kind of promote us, our brand, the, the blog, you know, we tie our family into a lot of that. So it's easy to say that, hey, they helped us out with video production or a social media promotion. They also help clean you know, dad's office, take out the trash. They used to shred a lot more. We don't have a lot of stuff to shred as much as we used to. But these are activities around the house, which you know, I work from home. So the, you know, cleaning the windows, uh, cleaning the bathroom, like all, all these things, that's how we can say justify putting them on our payroll. So if you're going to do this, you know, you, you got to have some something specific, some sort of task they are doing if you have the ability to set them up on the business. Now, if you don't if you don't own a business, that might be a little bit more difficult, but that is usually the common way that people do it. So that's a little bit about how needing income to get it set up. Now let's talk a little bit about who owns the account. And that's also a, a big deal. And the reason being is if you think of a custodial account, which is probably the, is one of the most common types of accounts that you can open if you are opening an account for your child, uh, meaning they haven't each reached the age of majority, uh, that they're still a minor. One of the accounts that you set up typically is called a custodial account. And a custodial account basically means that since they are a minor, they cannot legally take control of investing, you know, they don't have the, uh, the mental, mental capability, they don't have the experience, so you are acting on their behalf. So you open up a custodial account. And how that works is once the child reaches the age of 18 in most states, whenever they're legally an adult, then the child, now the adult, takes over. So the parent is in control of the funds. It's not, it's out of their hands, it's still in the child's name, but the child can't take control, can't take ownership until they're 18. So essentially, when you're opening a Roth IRA for your child, 
you are setting up essentially what is called a custodial Roth IRA. Now that is some firms have a different name, but that's essentially what you are setting up. So one of you, mom or dad, has to be on the account. It, ha it can only be one parent. I don't know if there's really any benefits having one versus the other. I know like on our kids, I am the custodian just because I'm the one that had the idea to set it up. So I'm the custodian on each of my kids' accounts and then their names are also on there. And, and that's essentially how it works. So whenever they turn the age of majority, I don't know why that's age of majority, just whenever they're adult, then they take over the account. And that's how, that's how it works. You know, so they can't take any of the money out until then. Now, if there is a trade-off, I mean, if there is a drawback, it probably is just that, right? So whenever, they're, whenever my kids are 18, if they're listening to this, it's your money. So if you want to cash it out, they can. Now, it will be on them to pay any taxes if there is any gain on whatever we invested. So the, they'll they'll be on the hook for the tax bill. So that's good, right? Not not on me, not my responsibility. Uh, so it doesn't affect us. But uh, legally, if they want to cash it out and do with it what they please, that's on them. So you no longer have that control. And that is the exact same thing as the custodial account. So just keep that in mind. Now, another question that comes up, especially when you're dealing with minor children is what about college? What about FAFSA? You know, if, if we're putting all this money in the kid's name, if you're setting up a custodial account, like this could affect financial aid, if this is a concern of yours, if it's not, then disregard. Now, the good thing about with the Roth IRA, since it's a retirement account, even though it's a custodial account, but since it's a retirement account, any, any money that's inside of a retirement account, does not affect when you, you basically you don't put this on the FAFSA. So it does not affect your financial aid, will not affect you qualifying for financial aid. So that is a, a big deal. Um, another kind of common question is, well, could you set up uh, one Roth IRA if you have multiple kids and can you put have like a joint Roth IRA with multiple kids? And the, the answer is no. One parent is a custodian one minor, one child is on the account. If you want to set up multiple Roth IRAs, just like we did, uh, you'll have to have individual accounts for each of them. And you could determine how much you can put in. So right now at the time of this recording, you can put up, up to $6,000 per year into the Roth. Uh, you don't have to put in 6,000. If you can only afford 50, 100, 500, whatever that is, you could start whatever, whatever you can afford, you can start with. Now, the final thing that I want to also share and this is definitely worth sharing, is that just because you can set up a Roth IRA for your kids, let's say you do have a business and you do add them on the payroll and they do have earned income, and then you go to some sort of investment brokerage or investment app, we can talk about Robinhood, for example, just because you qualify, not every investment brokerage, investment app offers Roth IRA for kids or custodial Roth IRAs. So you'll need to double check and make sure that that's something that they offer because there are, and I can't think of one top of my head. I, I know there is one because I was, I was looking into it for my own kids. Like they offer Roth IRAs. So you can open up a Roth IRA with them, but they didn't offer custodial Roth IRAs. Now that may have changed. Like I said, I don't remember who this was, but you want to double check to make sure that they offer that option. Uh, some do, some don't. So it's just another good thing to know. But there's just something about setting up a Roth IRA. Now, let me say this, and this is my own, just, just the final, my, my final two cents I would like to offer. If you have ambitions of setting up this Roth IRA for your kid or kids, and that's just something that you want to do, like I, that is awesome. Like I think that is great. The one thing that could be missing, especially if you have a fear potentially that they will take the money out. One thing that could be missing is giving them the gift of financial education and making sure that they fully understand to the best of their ability at that age, how amazing this is. Start talking to them about investing. Start talking to them about compounding interest. Start talking to them about the difference of investing into individual stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, cryptocurrency, 
start talking to them so that they understand. And I'm not ask I'm not asking you to quiz them. They, they don't need an MBA on investing for the, for them to have a Roth IRA. But the more that they know and the more they understand how powerful this gift is, this gift of having this tax-free account that you have set up for them. And if they fully understand that whatever amount is going in, that that is going to grow because of compounding interest, that thing is going to grow to hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars because you have started so soon, so much quicker than you did, so much quicker than I did. I mean, you have literally set them up for life as long as they stay committed, as long as they stay invested, as long as they don't cash out and run that risk of losing out on all of that compounding interest. So I love the fact that you want to do it. Make sure that after you do it, a little bit before, maybe during and definitely afterwards, continue to have those conversations about investing so that they understand how amazing this gift is. So that is the last thing that I wanted to share. So if you have any other questions like this or anything for that matter, once again, you can go to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask, submit that question, and we'll get that answered on a future podcast. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.